Here he is, Mr. Jeremy Knopf. Thank you. All right, before I get into my presentation, I want to take a second to touch on something. Y'all, what y'all did this morning with Cami and her organization, y'all are a bunch of badasses. There's something we're going to do. Thank you. All right, so there's something we're going to do to help amplify that. Later on, we're going to get everybody together. We're going to shoot a quick video talking about uh, what you guys did and how it's going to impact that organization and the people that they serve. And then we want, when she posts that, we'd like everyone to go out and share that to help get the word out. So can I get everyone to uh, help out with that? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Outstanding. All right, so before I get started, I'm just going to give you guys a quick rundown. Just a couple quick things about me. I'm not going to go too deep into that. If you want to know, just ask. Um, when I was younger, I spent some time in a cult. Uh, when I started my first business, um, one of my first clients, we took them from being on the verge of bankruptcy to landing a $54 million deal with the Hilton Hotels Corporation. That ended up becoming a $254 million deal worldwide later. More recently, I took another company that was basically a startup and helped them compete against large companies that have been in the business for years, and they're at the same level as them. Um, so because of these kind of things, I'm regularly featured in the media uh, on various marketing topics. So what I want to talk about today is something that there's one thing that absolutely every business needs if they want to build a successful business. Does anyone want to take a guess what that one thing is? Close. We want to think a little bit earlier in the process before we get to the revenue. I'll give you guys a hint. These people, they all have plenty of it. It's not plastic surgery. I mean, it probably is, but not in the context of this conversation. It is exposure. Not like that, you sickos. But not just any exposure, right? We all can get in front of potential clients. We all can get in front of uh, you know, our audience. But we need to get in front of the right people. So it's not just getting in front of people. We need to get in front of people who can make us more authoritative, more trustworthy. So obviously, the content that we're creating is, is one aspect of that, but also third-party endorsements. So anything from you know, a publication like Entrepreneur, Forbes, anything on the news, um, you know, maybe there's some experts in your industry, some kind of authority figure, if they can vouch for you. All of these things are the right kind of exposure that we want to be working towards. Because what's going to happen is if you have that kind of exposure, then all of your marketing is going to be significantly more impactful. Now, most of us don't have enough exposure, right? I think we all can agree that we all would like more exposure than we currently have. So for most of us, this all comes down to time, priorities, and knowledge. Now, frankly, the first two are bullshit. We all know that we need to do it, so it's a matter of prioritizing it and making the time for it. So what we're going to address today is we're going to address the knowledge. All right. So the first step here is we want to demonstrate our expertise. So how do we do that? I suppose I can't back up. But, all right, so I mentioned earlier that when I was younger, I was in a cult. This is that cult, the best dressed cult you will ever find. <laughs> now, <laughs> amen. Now, I learned a very valuable lesson while serving in this cult. I was a young man, 19 years old. How many? military do we have in here? I know Ty. All right, two. Okay. So when I was a young Lance Corporal, which in the hierarchy of the military is next to nothing, my commanding officer calls me in. We had just had a change of command ceremony. He calls me into his office. He wants us to change how we're handling a certain program within our, within our unit. Now, this is a thing that's within the whole Marine Corps. Not going to get too deep into exactly what it is because nobody's going to know what I'm talking about anyway. But 
This is something that was typically handled by somebody at a much higher rank than I was. So he calls me in and he says, let's go open off. I want to uh, bring all the documents from the MCI program in here. We're going to talk about what changes we're going to make to it. Now, he hadn't seen any of how we handled it in, within our unit. So I looked at this man. Now, before I go to my next slide, this guy was a mountain of a man, enormous, gigantic man, and he had this big, booming voice. Who here remembers the Lion King? It sounded just like Mufasa. The man would say something, and you would just, it would echo out across the plains. So this gigantic man calls me into his office, tells me, we're going to change how we're doing things. Doesn't know how we're doing things yet, but we're going to change them. So I looked at him, and before I realized that words were coming out of my mouth, they already started moving. I said to him, no, sir, we're not going to do that. We're going to do X, Y, and Z. Here's why we do it this way. Here's why we're not going to do it your way. He paused for what seemed like eternity and stared at me with that intense Marine Corps stare that you've probably all seen on a movie somewhere. And as I had plenty of time to sit here and evaluate my choice of making that statement, eventually he gave me a quick nod and said, it seems like you have everything under control, Lance Corporal. Run with it your way. So that was a bit of a red pill moment for me, which is interesting considering how much he looked like Morpheus from The Matrix. <laughs> but what that taught me was that a, a concept I had in my head for years that you just work hard, you bust your ass, and people will notice and you'll advance was absolute bullshit. We have to demonstrate what we know. We have to demonstrate our capabilities and our knowledge and show that. We can't just rely on people to hopefully they see what we're doing and hopefully they recognize our expertise. So we don't want to just get up there and tell people we're awesome though. All right, so this doesn't represent a very trustworthy kind of image, right? So Cammy probably knows who owns that van and she's probably got people going out to get them right now. Um, but we have to not just tell people how awesome we are, we have to be able to demonstrate that. Now, we're going to demonstrate that by actually creating content that's explaining how to solve particular problems. So there's a couple of people in here who are really great at this. Um, Matt is one example. You've got what, I think six books now, or is it seven? Okay. Beautiful. And, <laughs> and then, you know, the various Zoom calls and all kinds of things. You're constantly creating content. Rick Jordan's not in here right now, but he's another great example. He's constantly putting out stuff. Ray, you're another example. Um, what you're doing is you're creating content that's useful and is going to teach someone how to solve a problem. You're not necessarily solving it for them with that content, but you're demonstrating that you're capable of doing that. And that's, I mean, there's going to be people who are gonna look at that content and they're gonna just go and do it themselves, which is fine because they would never become clients anyway. What we want to do is demonstrate to the people who are too busy, the people that don't have the time to mess with it themselves, demonstrate that you are the expert, that you are the one that can solve their problem. The second step here is we have to build and leverage the right relationships. Now I know that's something that matters to all of you guys, that's why you're all here. Uh, you know, we all paid a, a decent amount of money to be here. We're all working hard to build these relationships, but when it comes to the marketing side, when it comes to the online world, a lot of people, they don't take the same approach to it. It's, it's kind of a, let's just dabble in it here a little bit, let's go dabble in it there, you know, mess around with it when I have some time, and that's a recipe for failure. So, we're all probably familiar with the Avengers, right? They're all badasses individually, but if they have to go and accomplish something major, they're going to work together and be infinitely more effective than any of them could be individually. Or even more so, more effective than they could be as a sum, right? When you bring them together, it's the, how does this saying go? Uh, the, the sum of the parts, I'm drawing a blank. You know what I'm talking about. All right, say again? Thank you. So, 
We want to use that same thinking here. Now, obviously, we're not going to be out fighting some villain trying to take over the universe, so uh, we don't need to be superheroes. So, Matt, you won't need to put on those tights. <laughs> All right. Next time. Next time. Iron Man uh, maybe. We got you. All right. So what we want to do here, though, is we want to take this from the perspective of working together with various people to create authority, well, to leverage authority and to leverage audience, right? If you get up here and you say, hey, I'm awesome, or I'm you know, great at this particular thing, that means one thing. If Ray gets up here and says, hey, this guy's awesome, that means something totally different. When you're telling people about yourself, it's just not, it's not as effective. So we want to leverage this. We want to find the right people and leverage their authority and their audience. So we need to have a process for this. This is something Matt mentioned in the introduction. A lot of us are just dabbling. We're not doing anything at all. And what happens when you do that is you don't get the results. You don't get the traction. Things aren't panning out the way you want them to. So we give up because we're not seeing the ROI out of our efforts. And when you have a process, you're making time for this. You're taking the action that you need to take, and you're measuring the output. So one of the things I like to do is we have a spreadsheet, Google Sheets, Excel, however you want to do it. And we put all of the links to various social profiles for the individuals that we want to engage with. And we do this both for our own stuff as, as well as for clients. And basically what we can do is we can go to any of their profiles on whatever interval we set, right? It might be daily, might be every few days, might be weekly, whatever it is. But you can go in there and go to all of their profiles. Because if you just go into a social network, whether it's Facebook, whether it's Instagram, LinkedIn, you're only going to see a fraction of what your people that you're trying to engage with are actually posting because of how the algorithms work. The other side of that is if you're not continually engaging with them, let's say for whatever reason you don't see their content for a while, or maybe they don't post for a while, well, what's going to happen is that algorithm is going to make their content start showing up less frequently. So now they may have a bunch of posts. They may be doing all kinds of things, but you may not see it. So this gives you a structure where you can stay on top of this and engage with them on a regular basis. And the more that you engage with these people, not only will you see more of their stuff, but they'll also see more of your stuff because you're engaging with them. And then the algorithm says, hey, these two people are supposed to be connecting because they're, they're, they're engaging on a regular basis, so you'll both see each other's content more frequently. Um, you know, what platforms you want to tie into this, that's going to depend on what you're trying to accomplish. It's going to depend on your industry, how things work for you. So you can totally adapt this to whatever's going to work best for you. But you, know, you set 50 to 100 of these, and you're going to have some solid traction there. But now we've got this other side, right? People could be doing a lot of things that aren't on social media, and you could miss that. So who here has ever heard of Google News Alerts? All right, awesome. So this is a free tool from Google. You can basically put in whatever you want, whatever search terms you want. And whenever Google finds something about that on the internet, they're going to send you an email notification. So this is really handy. You know, you could put in, uh, obviously, the, you know, the influencers within your industry are one group of people you could target with this. Journalists within your industry or journalists that cover topics that you do business in. Um, you, know, you might grab a bunch of business journalists at Entrepreneur, or uh, you could do news people. Like whatever, whatever you're trying to target, you can drop these people's names into here, and whenever they do something, you're going to get a notification. So let's say you put some writer at Entrepreneur in here. Every article that they publish, you're going to get notified as soon as it goes up. Because Google's going to see that because they're constantly on Entrepreneur. So now if you're the first person to go over there, they posted an article, you go take that link, share it on social media every time they post something. What kind of relationship do you think you're going to have with that journalist when you reach out to them after you've been sharing their content for weeks? and now you reach out to them and, and pitch them on a story about you. They're going to be a hell of a lot more receptive. So when you set these up, you generally are going to want to set them up with quotes. 
and you're going to want the notifications to come in immediately. You don't want to batch them. You don't want to wait till the end of the day or the end of the week. Uh, just have them pop in as, as soon as it happens. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to get our expertise in front of the media. This is an area that most people screw up terribly. Who here has a publication or a podcast or something where people have tried to reach out to you and get you to cover them in some way, shape, or form? Can you tell me what the typical pitch sounds like when somebody pitches you? Every, every time someone reaches out to be on my podcast, they're, they're basically trying to sell me on what, what they have, their service, or what they offer. Yeah. Basically, in a nutshell. Exactly. And that's, that's the case with any publication, right? People are like, hey, I'm awesome. You should cover me because I'm amazing. And those get shit canned immediately. When you can approach them from the perspective of what value you're bringing to their audience, because that's, that's what they care about. First is their audience. When you can bring value to their audience, you've now made it one step further. Second is them. How can you benefit them? And then the last thing in this equation is you. So we talked earlier about creating content that's demonstrating how to solve particular problems. So now we can take that content, get in front of various people that work at all these media organizations, and we've got logos of various news organizations here, but you know, people who have podcasts are another avenue here. Um, anybody that has any kind of publication is a good target for this. So basically, everyone in the media has the same problem that we do, right? We're, we talked about creating content. We, for those of us who have created content, let me ask you this. Have we struggled with coming up with ideas of what to create? Okay. The good news is the media has the same problem. The difference is they have to produce a shitload more of it than any of you do. 24 hours. Exactly. So if you can solve that problem for them, you're doing them a favor. You're going to be seen as infinitely valuable. So there's a really cool way that we can get in front of media, and that's through Facebook. Has anyone here ever heard of custom audiences? All right. So we actually have a, a setup we create where we create a custom audience of everybody that works for the media. So now let's say you've created a badass piece of content. Maybe Pam creates a video about how to not have your accounting look like a dumpster fire, right? <laughs> Maybe there's three steps to doing this. I don't know, because that's not my thing. But let's say she creates a badass video like that. And then right around tax time, goes and runs an ad with that video to all of these media people who are looking for stories about tax, because that's what everyone's interested in. And now you've got this opportunity to help them solve their problem, solve their audience's problem, and get yourself exposure in the process. So that's what we talked about today, is how to create the kind of exposure that builds authority and trust. So my challenge to you is this. Everyone in here, you guys are all at the top of your game, right? The better that you guys do, I feel like the better that the whole world is going to do, right? Because you guys are doing great things. So my challenge to you is to take these steps that I've uh, outlined here today, put them in practice. Whether you're doing it yourself, you're having a, uh, an assistant do it for you, or you hire someone to do it, whatever it is, take those steps so that you guys can get out there and help serve more people and become a, a greater value in the world. That's what I've got. Let's give him a hand, guys. Jeremy, great job, man.